Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to show you a game that might as well be illegal inside World of Tanks. I'm going to be playing a T28 HTC, which is the second reward vehicle from the first set of personal missions. And this thing is an absolute brute. Now, when I'm playing on a map like this, it's kind of hard to decide what I want to go for. I, I kind of want to take a durability device on a vehicle like this, even though it's got really low hit points overall for a tier 7 tank destroyer. But the durability will manage to keep my tracks on, hopefully for long enough to stop my opponents from flanking me. And really, when I'm in a matchup like this, when I'm playing against so many tier 5s, with only two top tier 7s on the enemy team, yeah, I think your vulnerability can be what can uh, be your undoing. However, I elect to still go for the maximum mobility, maximum firepower build here with gun rammer, vents and turbo. Now, when you get into one of these kinds of matchups of World of Tanks, it's actually really hard to to find the right balance. Inside a game like this, you are thinking, oh my word, farm, 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 farm. This is a really good opportunity to go and get lots of kills, lots of damage, and to have a really big game. Because obviously, when you're a top-tier tank, especially one like this, which depends so much on its armor to be able to deal with its opponents, and you're in a matchup like this, you've got an awesome opportunity. However, you've got to be a little bit careful, because... While you can try and over-push and be too aggressive, but you're still vulnerable. I've only got 880 hit points. All it takes is two good shots from a KV-3 that roll fairly well, and I'm out the game. Or alternatively, if any two of these vehicles actually manage to get my flank and know how to shoot my tracks, I'm out the game as well. So it's kind of like tantalizing. You want to find out how warm the bath is. You kind of want to jump into it as quickly as you possibly can because it's freezing outside and you, you blooming want as much out of this game as you possibly can. But you always run the risk. But it looks like one and a half minutes of me waiting for the KV-3 to now be on my right and not be on my left means that I can now isolate this VK-3001H. And the poor player here, they're actually firing gold with the Konish gun. So that gun, I believe, has 220 millimeters of penetration, but it's still not enough to be able to go through the front of the T-28 when I angle the vehicle like this. They need to try and find the side. And that's why you don't see me side scraping in a tank like this. Now we're gonna fire a high explosive round to begin with against the Hellcat to make sure that I'm no longer a 50-50 to finish them off with two shots, and then I can fire the armor-piercing one afterwards. That's how I often like to play. Fire an HE round against a tank, which I think I can pen an HE round, if I can change it so that I can manage to finish them off with only a couple of shells rather than three. And an intuition reload here for an HE shell allows us to finish off the Hummel as well. In retrospect, I should probably take one or two more high explosive rounds on this tank for situations like that. And just like that, first two and a half minutes of this battle, we're up three frags. We also got ourselves 1,700 damage. If I was playing another tier, 10, tier 7 tank destroyer, I'd be kind of happy with this result. It'd be quite a nice result for all in all a, a good game of World of Tanks. However, this is where things are going to get truly illegal. I'm isolated. I just decided that I, I felt that kind of momentum. And I felt that, ah, I'm in a powerful vehicle. And even though most of these tanks up on the enemy team are on full health, apart from the Assault Sherman on the enemy team, uh, I decided to just go for it. But, ooh, that's not a good start. The Assault Sherman was waiting in ambush and manages to pen a premium round on the front of my vehicle. But luckily for me, the M10 comes around. But oh dear, we bounce off the only plate on that entire tank that actually has any armor. And suddenly, uh, it's not looking too good. Thankfully, I know what this Assault Sherman's trying to do. He's trying to get up behind me, and I'm not going to let that happen. Even if I have to tank around now from the M10, I'm going to happily tank that shell to make sure I can secure a kill against clearly a knowledgeable and dangerous player with the kind of ammunition that they are using on that tank. Luckily, we shut down the Tier 6 medium tank. Uh, with, with our first frag in this kind of like one versus five situation, really. It would be kind of like a Kolobanov's medal if it wasn't for the fact that I still had a huge amount of players on my team, or at least an opportunity to be able to see if we can get one. But oh my word, this is the kind of matchup which spawns these kinds of moments, right? So the M10 now gets crippled down to a point where they're not going to... Uh, I'm going to be able to destroy them in a single shell. But I've still got to be careful. I'm hoping, honestly, that the enemy players decide to rush down the other hill. But, oh, that's not the case. The VK now rushes me, manages to get my side, bouncing off it, luckily. But now they're at that position, I'm going to have to start to take hits. In this scenario, it's just about finishing off one of the tanks. Luckily, we don't go pop and we've got our repair kit still. And you know what? Well played to that VK. 
They did everything that they could to try and take out an overpowered tank in a scenario like this, and that was getting the side of my tank. The worst thing that they could ever do was to sit there side by side and just trade with the front of this tank. If you've got hit points, get the side. And then you force your opponents to have to turn and expose the weak armor on a vehicle like this. It's just a shame that even though the tier 5 player did everything right, unfortunately for him, I didn't panic. I did everything right from my side as well. And I come out with our in our 1 versus 5 with now 3 kills. Oh god, disaster, the Firefly. I decide that I ram them there, and they actually do zero damage to me, because this is actually quite a heavy tank. It weighs 70 tons, so luckily for me, the Firefly didn't really think about that. I'm raising my gun to try and stop him from being able to catch the weak point on top, and as you can see, it's just all about finishing off your opponents fast enough to stop them from ever getting into a multiple tank situation. I'm hoping that we can get the ram here on the Wolverine. Don't quite manage to make it. Luckily, they bounce a second shot off me. And just like that, Radley Walters medal. 4,000 damage and 8 kills. Oh, yeah, this game, it, it practically should have been illegal with this kind of matchmaking. But nevertheless... Even though this vehicle is outrageous, even though we were inside a nice matchup, we still had to make sure we did the basics right. And that is to eliminate your opponent's opportunity to flank you and to make sure you're also aggressive in a situation like this. If you aren't actively trying to finish off your opponents as quickly as possible, you're not going to win a 1 versus 3 at the same time. But you can win a 1 versus 5 if it's 1 by 1 by 1 or even 2 by 1 at times in this battle. So for all of you out there wondering how to make the most of tricky situations in World of Tanks when you are outnumbered, you have to be aggressive. I see so many players in situations that I would be salivating at the prospect of putting myself in to, to test myself, as well as gain those epic opportunities to get the epic medals that everybody wants. But time and time, I'm there watching them in the scenario and seeing that they're just failing to, to turn up the heat against their opponents. So the next time you find yourself in a scenario where things are starting to look bleak, it feels counterintuitive, but you just have to get more and more reckless and aggressive as the situation becomes more and more dire. And with a bit of luck, results like this happen. An ace tanker for our 1,600 base experience, a Radley Walters medal for those eight kills, and a high caliber for the near 4,000 damage that we dealt. We've got a cool-headed medal for surviving 10 ricochets in a row, and a steel wall for blocking enough damage to kill this vehicle like four times over. And as I don't think we fired any gold rounds in this game, we make a meaty profit, although this is not a premium tank. And so, the T28 concept, if you were thinking about trading this vehicle in, in Wargaming's trading event, to be able to get yourself a meaty discount off a new premium vehicle, I would still probably consider it if this thing just looks boring and not your playstyle. But also, be very careful, as once you've traded this thing in, I think there's no way of ever being able to get it back. So make sure it would be something you would absolutely not regret in the future. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was a game that should be illegal inside World of Tanks. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Monday, I'm going to be going live right now on Twitch to be able to give you yet more tokens to help people get either the Japanese Tiger or the Dicamax completely for free. So come along, swing by, get some rewards, and enjoy some, hopefully, okay gameplay, at least occasionally. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.